It used to take about a week. These days it takes about six weeks. I don't want this engine to sit here for six weeks waiting on a head gasket. So what I've done, because I build a lot of these engines, is I actually... Hi guys, welcome back to the JPM Performance Channel. What we're going to talk about today is calculating compression. A lot of the race classes and series that we that I personally build engines for have compression limits and if you go to the championships and do really well they will check your compression. They used to do it with a machine called a whistler which uh, essentially put air down through the spark plug hole and gave you an approximate compression. Over the last few years They've been getting much more precise and actually doing it the way you're supposed to do it, which is what I'm going to show you today. So what we have here is an STL 1.6 Miata engine. You can see that I've got the pistons installed, the bottom end is sealed up. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to find top dead center because what we're going to do is we're going to measure our piston deck height. Piston deck height is from the flats of the piston, whether or not they, it sticks up or below deck on the block. So what I have here is a simple magnetic base with a dial indicator right on top of the piston. And I will simply rock this until it comes up to top dead center. I'll go both directions until I get the needle just perfect. So once I have that set, I can now remove this, put it out of the way, What I use for this is a dial indicator with a base on it. The reason that it has a base is so, first of all, I will check it on the deck to make sure that it's reading exactly zero. Now, if your piston is below deck, it's quite simple to put the base across the deck and measure down to the piston. On these particular pistons, though, they generally stick up slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the base right on the flat part of the piston and measure down. So that is right at four thousandths. Measure both sides. I try and rock the piston to get it in the center. A piston like this has about four thousandths clearance between the skirt of the piston and the bore in the block. So these pistons will rock, especially when they're cold. The reason that you have a little extra clearance in a forged piston is because they grow so much more than a cast piston which is what most street cars have. But these are forged pistons so they will grow so there's a little more room there between the pistons, piston and the bore. So I'll try and rock it but I will check both sides of the piston over here and over here. So this side was four thousandths. This side is four thousandths as well. So we know that we are four thousandths above deck. So I'm going to make a note of that. Now, a quick, a quick thing to reference, there are, there are obviously a couple more things that we need to know. We need to know what this piston displaces, meaning, as you can see, the piston has a pretty good pop-up in the center, but it also has big valve clearance pockets. Um, obviously, when you run a higher lift cam, you need more clearance in your piston pockets. So generally the piston manufacturer will give you this spec. In this case these are diamond pistons and the effective volume is minus 1.72 cc's. We will make a notation of that as well. Now if you don't have that spec from the piston manufacturer and honestly any forged piston manufacturer will give you that spec. If you don't have that, you have to calculate it yourself. And what you do is, and I'm not going to show you that right now because we don't need to, and I, I really don't like to do it that way, especially on a brand new engine, because what you will do is you will lower the piston below deck, measure how far down below deck it is, use your glass, and, and grease and actually CC the top of the piston. That will give you a certain number. 
Now, let's say it's 20 cc's. Well, obviously the piston's not um, effectively displacing 20 cc's. You have to take into account how far below deck it is. So that is going to be a simple calculation of bore and how far below deck you moved the piston down. There's a calculation for that. Easy, easy to find online. Just Google it. So we know that we have minus 1.72 cc's and this piston is four thousandths above deck. Now what we'll do is we will come over here and we are going to cc this combustion chamber. First, first step on that is to use the actual spark plug that you're going to be running. This is very important because spark plugs can have different depths, they can displace different amounts of cc's, um, depending on, even depending on the washer crush can make a difference on this calculation. But this is very, very important. We'll get that nice and snug. I like to use the, uh, the extension here to stick underneath of the cylinder head like that. Why do I do that? Because when we're going to CC, I need to get fluid in this combustion chamber and I need to essentially get all of the air out. So what I will do is I will utilize this piece of glass and I will put this all the, the hole all the way up here at the top so that it will fill this combustion chamber up right to the top. Now obviously if we just set this on here and started filling it up it's probably going to leak. What do we do about that? I use just a little bit of a thin thin grease around the edge Go all the way around. You don't want a lot because you do want this glass to sit down flat on the cylinder head. But we also need to seal this. Otherwise we will get leakage past the glass and onto the cylinder head which will give us a very incorrect reading. So once we put that on there, give it a good push you can actually see the grease spread and that gives us a really nice seal around that combustion chamber. Now what I have here is a burette which will calculate our cc's. And what I like to use is isopropyl alcohol. It cleans up really well and uh, it's, it's very dense and works really good for calculating this. So before you start pouring that in, make sure you turn your valve off. Otherwise you'll make a big mess. So let's fill this up. So you want to fill it up well past the zero mark because you have to bleed off the air out of the bottom. So you need a little bit of room, just like that. And then what I like to do is bring the level down to where the bottom of the bubble, I'm going to call it a bubble. When you do this, you'll understand what I mean. Bring the bottom of the bubble down right to the top of the zero. I'm going to bring this up here, see if you can get a look at that. So the bottom of my bubble is right there at the top of the zero when you're looking at it straight on. Now this is when it takes an extremely steady hand. And you will simply fill this combustion chamber up. This is going to measure how many cc's are in this combustion chamber, which is our final measurement that we need for displacement. Be very, very steady. And as you get close, slow it down to a drip. If you make a mistake here, you have to start over. right to the bottom of the plate. We'll take a quick look here. That is right at 
35 cc's. 35.0. So you need a very accurate burette to make this happen. Now what else do you need? Obviously we need to know the bore size and we need to know the stroke of the crankshaft. So now what we'll do is we'll go into the office with all of our calculations. Our combustion chamber was 35.0 cc's. Piston was minus 1.72, meaning that it effectively is below deck 1.72 cc's. Even though it has this pop-up, if this was a flat piston, it's below deck 1.72 cc's, but the piston is also popped up four thousandths. So let's go to our calculation. Okay. There's always a little bit of math that goes on when building a proper racing engine. I like to use this static compression ratio calculator. It's rbracing-rsr.com backslash comp static calc.html. It's a really good, um, it's a really good uh, site and it walks you directly through how to do this. So we need our bore, which I know is 3.110. We need our stroke, which I know is 3.29. Our head gasket thickness, I'm going to start with 40 thousandths. Now, personally, as an engine builder, my preference is to have 35 thousandths between the top of the piston and the flat on the cylinder head. So because we were about four thousandths, we're four thousandths above, I'm going to start with a 40 thousandths gasket, which is really the thinnest gasket that I will run in this motor. Deck height, it tells you exactly what to do here. Enter a negative number if the piston sur flat surface sticks up past, and obviously ours does not, so we are going to... Actually, ours does, I'm sorry. It is minus 0 .004 is our deck height because it is four thousandths above deck. Our piston top volume we know is... 1.72 cc's. If it was a big, big pop-up and the piston displaced, we would put that into uh, a negative number, but because we're adding 1.72 cc's, that's going to be a positive number. And then, of course, we know that our combustion chamber is 35 cc's. All you do is hit the calculate compression. So, this engine is at, at our spec that we just measured, the static compression ratio is 10.94. This is pretty much perfect because the limit in STL is 11 to 1. And it's always good to give yourself a little bit of room. So 10.94 with a 40 thousandths head gasket, that gives me the clearance that I want between the piston and the cylinder head and also gets our compression exactly where we want to go. So the other thing that I always do and I, I use um, I use a build sheet for every engine that I build and when I calculate this I print out one of these and staple it to my build sheet and actually when we go to the runoffs I bring all of my build sheets for all of my customers so that if they do end up going to uh, impound and get torn down, if there's a discrepancy, I simply whip out my compression ratio calculator and I will compare my numbers to what they get because they will do this as well at the track. So we'll print that out and let's go back to the main engine. Okay guys, we've printed out our static compression ratio calculator. This will go in this customer's build sheet. Gives us all the information in case they have an issue at the track, we can reference this. Now, a year ago, pre-COVID, this is a COVID year, um, I could simply get online and order 
any thickness head gasket that I want from Kometic. Now, it used to take about a week. These days it takes about six weeks. I don't want this engine to sit here for six weeks waiting on a head gasket. So what I've done, because I build a lot of these engines, is I actually stock many, many thicknesses of these gaskets for my customers. So I just happen to have an 040 head gasket. I keep lots and lots of these in different thicknesses. This is a 45 and it goes up from there. So once I use this gasket, I will call up Kometic and I will order some more. And then I will have always have the head gasket that we need in stock. So this is the proper way to calculate compression so that you're compliant to the rules for your class. Hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, little bit of a technical video today. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Click on that bell so you get notified whenever I have these new videos coming up. Because we do fun stuff like this all the time. And uh, I'm always really curious for you guys to, to comment on these videos. If you have a question, if you have a comment, I'm open to whatever you want to talk about. Uh, like I always say, there's more than one th way to do things, but this is the way I do it, and we're very successful at it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the JPM Performance Channel.